Welcome to the Owens Valley Radio Observatory. Let's get to it. Today, we're going to talk about radio astronomy. Behind me is the Owens Valley Radio Observatory here in Big Pine, California. It's jointly operated by the New Jersey Institute of uh, Technology and Caltech. But what does all of this do? What's it for? A lot of you, I'm sure, have taken binoculars or just laid up and looked at the stars and just were just awestruck of the, some of the things you've seen. Maybe some of you have seen a meteor coming in and leaving a trail behind. All of that that you see is in the visible light spectrum. It's the stuff that your eyeballs can see. There's so much more coming out of the sky than just visible light, stuff you can't see. And that's what these instruments are for. These instruments are built and they're made to monitor, literally, signals from outer space. They can find quasars. Uh, some of them do uh, x-ray observations. The whole night sky looks completely different if you could see x-rays. The night sky would look completely different if you could see different wavelengths beyond what your eyes can now. So what these uh, telescopes do is they focus on a specific point in the sky and they track that point slowly across the, the day, listening, listening, and recording the things that they hear. And I'm not sure what they're doing out here in Owens Valley today. They may be uh, monitoring or listening to quasars or pulsars. They may be listening to black holes. They may be trying to do something about dark matter. And the cool thing about this radio observatory, it is the largest in the world that's operated by a university. You may have seen this particular scope at the movies. This is where uh, Charlie Sheen was running around the desert trying to tell the world about aliens. This is where he played Zane in the movie Arrival, right here. And then the little kid popped into the end of the film, the little kid popped his knees backwards and ran off into the desert. This is the desert he ran off into. Some of the instruments here at Owens Valley include the uh, COMAP, which is the carbon monoxide mapping array pathfinder. I don't know if you can see it or not, but off in the background, there's this valley is full of radio telescopes. There's this one here, then there's a really big one in the background you can see. Then there's two, three, four, I mean, there's, or a dozen telescopes. They're all probably part of different experiments. Also here is the expanded Owens Valley Solar Array. We can actually use uh, radio telescopes to actually listen to the sun, not just look at it, but we'll listen to it. We can hear things like solar flares and surface disruptions. Now, one thing that's here in Owens Valley is the Owens Valley Long Wavelength Array. Somewhere out here, you can it consists of 288 dipole antennas, and it's spread out over the desert. It's equivalent to 450 football fields of listening space. And what it does, it produces whole sky images. And if you wanted to create an image of the whole sky from a radio point of view, if you want to listen to the whole sky, then you'd use something like this. And I know a lot of ham radio guys they set up their own dishes to see what they can listen to. If you're interested in radio astronomy, and look up some of the ham radio resources on the internet for uh, radio astronomy. And maybe you can build you a small antenna, add a scrap, and see what you can listen to. There is all sorts of stuff coming from the heavens that is fascinating. And the next big discovery could come from you. Do not discount your importance to radio astronomy if that's something you want to go into. You don't have to have one of these big things to make an impact. These make it easier, but you don't have to have this. You can do it from your own backyard. Behind me is a deep synoptic array. And I really couldn't tell you which of these little dishes is the deep synoptic array or which one, which ones they are. They're, I think they're the 15 footers. You may not be able to see them the way, way, way in the back. I'm not even sure I can see them from here. And what they're using those for is for fast radio bursts. We're not really sure what a fast radio burst is. They're very, very interesting. Some people believe they're uh, evidence of uh, alien life. Some believe they are uh, some sort of artifact from an unknown cosmic structure that we have yet to discover. Are these fast radio bursts the uh, birth of uh, black holes? Or are they the death of black holes? 
Is this something to do with dark matter? We just don't know. But uh, I'll include some uh, links here in the uh, show notes about the observatory here, the different programs going on here, and fast radio bursts. They're very fascinating. Personally, all the things that's going on here, the fast radio bursts are the most interesting to me because they're so rare and we don't know what they are. I mean, there's a lot of stuff we don't know what it is, but this has, I believe, the potential to really... There's some sort of knowledge breakthrough there concerning the fast radio bursts. And I think we really need to keep going and seeing what these phenomena are. Because I'm sure it'll lead to something else. They're always random. They're always someplace out in the sky. They're never in the same spot. At least I don't believe we found the same burst in the same place. They're always someplace else. So it kind of leads us maybe to some other phenomenon, like maybe a black hole is created or a black hole dies, maybe. Or it could be aliens trying to get a dial tone. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they've got their, their, their galactic modem and that's the ringtone for it. I don't know. And so let me give you a little bit of my history concerning how I became fascinated by radio astronomy. I grew up in West Virginia, and every weekend my um, grandparents, they'd take some big long drive on the weekend. We'd find little hiking spots, little state parks. And we were riding around, didn't know where we were going, we are just cruising, exploring. And we came across this hilltop. And we came across this sign that said, turn off all radios. And as we reached the top of the summit, there in the valley below were dishes that looked just like this. Some bigger. They were amazing. And it was the Green Bank Radio Observatory. in I think one of the, the nation's only quiet zone. You can't, there's no Wi-Fi. You can't have cell phones. There's no radio at all in this valley in West Virginia because it is so sensitive. If it was today, I couldn't take my camera into Green Bank to videotape it. I'd just have to take still photos with a film camera to take the shots. That is how sensitive the signals are that they're listening to in Green Bank. You know, my head exploded as a child. And, oh my God, we gotta go, we gotta go, we can't go, can we go, oh, please go. They relented because I kinda, you know, they just didn't want to hear me cry all the way home. Went into the facility, we got on the bus and we took the tour. We rode around the grounds and the tour guide was telling, telling us about, oh, this here, this is the, this radio telescope does this. And over here's the dormitory for the scientists. And over here is a baseball field, and there's like deer running through the ba baseball field. So we get to the visitor center, and there's a film. They're going to show us this film in the visitor center. And this guy with this really distinctive accent shows us a little film about SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. And this guy with a real peculiar accent told us about how aliens could be listening to all of our radio waves. Everything that we've put out, if it has a sufficient enough power, escapes the electromagnetic field of Earth and can travel through space. It goes on forever. Now the signal gets weaker, but it continues. And then he flipped it. He says, what if we can hear the radio signals of an alien civilization? At this point in time, I already, you know, I had already turned my bedroom into a laboratory. I had all sorts of electronic projects. I was already in the ham radio. It was, you know, I was one of those kids, right? And it blew my mind. It absolutely blew my mind. And remember, we had just landed on the moon a few years before my visit to Green Bay. It was just astonishing that there could be signals, not just signals from the sun, quasars, pulsars, nebula, whatever. But there could be alien civilizations with their version of I Love Lucy, you know? And I was, I was just stunned, stunned. And so, of course, the little geek in me, head exploded and I just, I was just fascinated. So I really started researching more, reading more, um, as I could about radio astronomy. I went to the local uh, college library, Concord College in Athens, West Virginia, and started reading up on radio signals and um, radio astronomy as much as I could. Yeah, I was, my head was just literally on fire. Maybe a year or two later, 
there was this show called Cosmos. And I was there, you know, I was all geeked out. I actually had one, a cassette recorder all hooked up I, it was my microphone at the TV speaker. I had my little note, my notepad, I had my pencils, had a pencil sharpener and eraser so I could take notes during the broadcast because that's the kind of nerd I am. I, it, you have no idea what it's like to go through life like me. So here I am, pencil to paper, ready to download the knowledge of the universe on my notepad. And here comes that distinctive accent. That distinctive accent. Talking about billions and billions of stars in the universe. The guy at Green Bank that showed me the SETI movie that blew my mind was none other than Carl Sagan. It was Carl Sagan! If I had only knew, then it was Carl and Sagan at Green Bank lecturing me on SETI. Mind blown again. <laughs> I, I will say this, it, you know, it is um, that guy was an amazing science educator. He was amazing. So, of course, little geek me bought every book he had, would continue to buy every book he published. There are a lot of people that try to follow into his footsteps, and I am grateful to all of them, but man, oh man, Carl Sagan was King Mo D. And Carl Sagan is why I'm here today. If it wasn't for Carl Sagan, I would not, I would have just drove by, oh, it's some military thing, you know, with no interest. But Carl Sagan lit my head on fire concerning radio astronomy. And that's why what they're doing, whatever they're doing here at the Owens Valley Radio Observatory, is vital to science. Absolutely vital. And I encourage you to get involved. Even if it's a hobby, even if it's just a, you know, just a little hobby experiment. You know, you can find an old dish, hook it up to a Raspberry Pi and start recording data. You will probably not know what you're listening to, but you can find out. You can learn what you're listening to. And I guarantee you, it will astonish you. So that's all from the Owens Valley Radio Observatory. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing, please subscribe. Till next time, I'll be your lab partner. Take care. Bye-bye.